Hi, this is Jason from OnSong. I want to show you how you can use OnSong Connect to develop your own applications to make use of an OnSong library being used on stage or, or anywhere. Uh, so let's take a look. First of all, we're going to go into our iPad. Now I'm going to be demoing this off of the iOS simulator. We're going to tap on the Share menu and choose Connect. And then let's go over here to the Servers tab. Now you'll see that we do have uh, one server set up here. But let's turn on this Share Your Library with Others switch. Now if we wait just a second, we're going to see that the iPad simulator does show up here on our list then because now the iPad simulator is a server. Now underneath of this you'll see a, an IP address and a port number. If I tap on this I will uh, be able to browse the API documentation. But of course it's not too useful on the iPad and you'll probably be developing on a computer. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead over to a, a Safari web browser here. Let's take a look. And you'll see here I just typed into the uh, address bar 10.1.10.36 colon 5076 slash API. And this is going to show me the API documentation for OnSong Connect. So the first thing we are going to need to do is to authenticate our application that we're writing uh, with OnSong Connect. By the way, OnSong Connect uh, is a RESTful web service that returns uh, Java Standard Object Notation, or JSON. Um, and it does typically, I mean, we, we, we can post information to it, but uh, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the methods do take query string parameters just because it, it's much more easy for uh, most developers to use that instead of having to create a JSON post and post it up there and all that. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can implement this. I'm going to be using a piece of software called Rested. Rested is available on the Mac App Store. If you're using a Mac, there's probably a lot of other uh, applications that you could use. And it's a really great way to, to go through a, uh, an API and, and just kind of play around with it before you commit it to code. So here, what I've done is type in the IP address again that is showing up in OnSong uh, with the port number. By the way, the port number is 5076, and that is the best way that you could spell the word song using numbers. So that's one way to kind of remember it. It sort of looks like an S is O, a 7 is the N, and G is the 6. And we're just going to type slash API and hit enter. And what you'll see is that we do get the HTML uh, back on the right-hand side containing all of my user documentation. To authenticate, what we need to do is, well, first of all, every request needs an auth token. Uh, and that is something that you create. Okay, so what it needs to be is at least 16 characters long. We recommend something very unique, you know, whether you take some values in MD5, hash them, or get an identifier from your application, uh, or from the computer you're using. It's up to you. Uh, what we're going to do is just type in some random numbers here. So let's see, we're just going to kind of do this. And that's going to be our auth code. And first thing we want, to, what we want to do is to see if that is that token is available. So you're going to want to take this token, store it in your application, make sure that you're using the same token uh, for every request. But before you start using that, like maybe every time that you connect to a particular iPad, uh, you want to make sure, first of all, that that auth code is active. So we're going to type the, uh, the word back here, auth. We're going to call the auth method with uh, the auth function with the get HTTP method and hit send request. And we're going to see that it's not registered. Uh, to register, it's pretty simple. You just change your HTTP method to put, hit send, and it says that we are not currently accepting users. Now, if you get that, that means that typically the iPad, and we're going to switch over here to our iPad. Uh, we'll be saying, hey, look, a device named, a specific name here, let's say our device code. By the way, uh, if you look in the, the user documentation, you can actually send a name um, with that request so it's not using this, this funky code. There is a way to send a name for your device. Anyway, we're going to hit accept, and then we're going to come back over here to rested, and we're going to submit that again. And now it's going to say it's accepted because we, we have confirmed that we are going to allow that device to connect to the iPad. And so now what we can do is come back over here to the get method and hit send request and we'll see our token is now successfully registered. 
So what we are going to be doing is sending the auth token with every single request. And we are going to change the, um, the method here, the URL, uh, to whatever we want the, uh, the API to do. So a, a common thing would be to, let's say, list songs. So we're just going to change that to songs and use the get method and hit send. And you're going to see we get, well, 583 songs. The results come back as a list, as an array. Uh, which can, includes most common things like the ID, the title, whether it's favorite or favorite or not, the artist and the key. Those are basic attributes. It allows what we send back to be very, very uh, terse and comes back almost immediately, especially over a local network. Now we can also use some other parameters here. For instance, maybe I want to only look up songs that have to do with love. I could type uh, Q, actually, hold on, it would be a question mark. Q equals love. Again, this is a query string uh, that we can adjust and hit send. And now we'll see we get 316 songs back. So you could definitely do um, a lot of functions, pretty much any function I believe that you could do an OnSong, you could do with the OnSong Connect API. If I want to look up a specific book, uh, first of all, let's take a look at what books I have. I can type in here books, hit get, and we'll see I have one book. It's called Christmas. Take the ID which is usually the same as the name unless you've renamed the book. And you can say songs, question mark, book equals Christmas. Hit send. And hold on, let me change something here. I think I might need to get rid of that slash. Oh, I got a space here. There we go. Now we have 22 songs in my Christmas book. You can see they're all pretty much Christmas songs there. So once I have a song that I'm interested in, let's say uh, Angels from the Realm of Glory, we can select that ID. That is the song ID, it's a long ID. Um, we come over here, we would, right after the songs URL, we'll then type in the ID. And again, I'm just copying and pasting all this, I'm not gonna type that and I hope you don't either. And we'll hit send and that's gonna give us information about the song. So you can see the styles, all the style information is in a nice styles uh, property, keywords, duration, chord style, uh, the title, uh, just various information. Again, nothing, you know, you could probably skip this step unless you're actually doing some editing of some kind and come to this step where you type slash content and hit get, or hit send request, and you'll see that we now get the content of this song. Now it looks like this song might be a PDF. Um, so the again, the, li the actual list will have this information as well. I'm just gonna look in here. We probably have use file equals true, which means that there is a, a external file that's being used instead of actual content. So you can see here our content, well, that's not coming out very well. Uh, because we don't actually have any content associated with this particular song. Uh, so let's take a look at our user documentation here. And again, I have to reference this from time to time. You can see we can create songs, we can view the song information, we can update the song information, we can delete the song, we can retrieve its content, we can update its content, uh, but we can also retrieve an external file. And that's what we're going to need to do for this particular song. So if you have a use file property set in the song, you're going to just probably want to skip right to this slash file. Let's go back here to rested and see what happens. If I type in file right here, send request, you're going to see that we do get a file attachment uh, of type PDF. And now Rested doesn't know really what to do with this particular file, but obviously you could do something with it. You could show the PDF, you could download it, whatever you need to do. I uh, will see that it is 1 point, or 194K. Uh, so that's how we do that. Uh, let's go back to our songs list and just try to pick a song that has uh, something I want. I do know that the song 10,000 Reasons has uh, content, so we're just going to hit that quick. We have one song called 10,000 Reasons, so we're going to come over here, and again, same thing, we're just going to come over here, we're just going to type slash content right away, slash content, send request, there we go. And now we get the actual text content of that song. Now let's say we want that in a different format, maybe we don't want it as how it is declared in the song editor. By the way, this is great if you're editing the content of the song, if you want to have your own text editor or whatnot. Um, 
that's a great way to do that. But let's say we want it as a PDF. We could just type content.pdf. And now, again, Rested isn't going to be able to display the PDF, but we'll see that it is a 30 uh, kilobyte PDF that is being generated. If we want to view it as um, an HTML file, we could do that as well. Any file format that's supported um, in the export uh, features of OnSong is actually supported here. Here's an HTML file. If I type XML, we're probably going to get an open song file format. If I just want text, I can do that. And there are some uh, options that you can apply to this as well, some query string options as well. Uh, here's just a plain text version. So I hope that gives you a good starter for how to use OnSong Connect in OnSong. Uh, again, a very powerful tool that will allow you to build applications that work inside of the OnSong ecosystem, uh, whether you're making a lyrics projection software, uh, editing software, whatever, you can do that now in OnSong. Thanks for watching.